we're getting fuel and we got the trailer hooked up with our new winch setup because we're going on an adventure so where are we going you might ask well we are back at 406 garage but no i'm not here to pick up the cab over okay eeny meeny miny mo what are we bringing home today well good morning ben morning everyone's probably really confused right now because i brought a trailer to your place so they probably think i'm getting something of yours but now you're hooking up a trailer too you're not here loading up stuff to buy i'm not gonna buy it i'm just gonna load it up oh darn it so what are we doing we are going to go oh, to point at youtube or wherever we are going to go to a farm location um gentleman who'd been collecting international harvester stuff for probably i think he said about 50 years um his daughter and her husband are taking care of the estate he passed away and they are wanting to sell the tractors the scouts the pickups the grain trucks the equipment the tools so they called me and i called you and said this seems like a good adventure we should go do this so here so, we go so here we go we're off into the land of international harvesters and farm equipment and tools and probably some porter stuff i'm guessing i like it yeah so it should be interesting let's go see what we can find <coughs> voice cut out right as you end. die yeah let's go see what we can find <laughs> so we are off on our adventure we got quite a little road trip to do to to get there and then uh, we'll see what kind of treasures we can find okay so we made it up to the top of sanium pass and it is raining and there's kind of a mix of snow in here too some light snowflakes coming down so actually if you look up there on that hill right there that's snow snow season's coming so over here on the western half of oregon now this is supposed to be the wet and rainy part of oregon and get over here and the blue sky comes out so i don't know we've been off the pavement driving on this dirt road for an impressively long time so i'm not sure exactly where we're going but i can't imagine we're too awful far away Hey, we are here, and I don't know if we screwed up or not by pulling all the way in here because there's not a whole lot of dry ground it looks like to turn around on, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, ben is already out checking stuff out, so we're going to go see if we can catch up to him. There's already something that caught my eye, like, right off the bat, so we'll go look at that in a bit, too. Check this out. How long do you think that chainsaw has been in that tree? That's cool. So we're out here, we found some of the trucks. And uh, how old was this guy, Ben? You know, actually I didn't ask him that. I think he, uh, based on what she told me, he was in his 80s. In his 80s. 80s. And he was born on the other side of that grove of trees. Right, right over there, there at that grove of trees. And lived his whole life here. here. Died passed right away there. in his house. Yeah, he's so. never left this property ever in his entire life. So he's got quite a collection of stuff here. Uh, yeah, trucks, cars, tractors, equipment, amazing machinery, um, amazing farm equipment. It's from that era of people where if it broke, you went into the shop and you got something and you f created the part from nothing and you put it on the piece of machinery and you fixed the machinery and you went back outside and continued working. And when you see the shop, you'll see that this dude really did make... Incredible. He has a shop set up to make everything. If it broke and he didn't have it, which most stuff like there's enough parts around here to fix most everything here if you didn't have it he's got the tools and equipment to make it yes and it looks like that's exactly what he did so yes. this is really cool place to get to check out and the fact that he was born right there lived his whole life on this farm, farm. and died right there and did everything himself in between so. yeah i wish we could have talked to him um obviously we didn't get to but this is a, a really interesting representation of the history of his life just looking at what's here you know which i think is really neat and i like to be able to tell these stories and be able to pass these stories on to people you know it's uh it's pretty cool well let's get to looking around at what we got yeah this one has coilovers too yeah he was into that look at yeah. coilovers yeah so does this one Oh, I guess I could have just looked like this instead of going through the wheel well since there's no engine in here. And the hood's in the back. And the hood's in the back. So, there's a Scout. That's a Scout 80. Scout 80. 
This is about a 72 or 73 three quarter ton with the factory PTO winch and bumper. We've talked about that before. This is a 72 or 73 travelette long bed four wheel drive that has an unknown diesel engine in it and uh, what appears to be an NV4500. So as we were kind of talking and guessing, it's probably some GM diesel with a GM transmission. That you know what? Put in there. These people right here. Don't know. A lot of them are really smart. We should show them and Pop ask them. The hood and see what it's Let's do that. Yeah. I, bet, I bet that's the fastest way we could figure this out. Yeah, get, get a text message or a private message or a comment in a few minutes. So that's Ford, which I don't believe has anything to do with anything. Yeah, let's move that out of the way. So, very smart people of YouTube. What, what engine is that? Yeah, what engine is this? It's some mechanical diesel. I mean, I I thought maybe like a 6.5 or a 6.2. And then we were talking maybe it was a 6.9 IDI, but I don't think that's it. It doesn't look goofy enough to be a Ford. You know, as we're saying this, there's someone at their computer screen not just screaming like, you like, idiots, it's such it's and such, this. like it's so obvious. Why, why, get, why don't you guys know that? <laughs> and, and we have no idea. Yeah, we don't, but that's okay. Really need the Ford motor crafting in here. Yeah, so, uh, what do you think? Can you hear that? Does that, <laughs> does that resonate on the microphone? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Put the mic... <laughs> I mean, that's got to be a 300-pound bumper. That's why the front end's buried into the dirt. <laughs> Seriously. And you know this is the one you're hauling today. Of course, it's the heaviest one. Yeah, and you have the biggest trailer. That's true. I didn't think that through. That one's full of garbage. He said he's going to clean that one out. What year is that? This is a 70, actually I have it on the list. This is a 75, so this is the very last year they made them. But he's into a little bit of everything, it looks like. Yeah. Well, he's a farmer of the Depression era, which means if anything broke, you saved it, because in the future, if something else broke, you might be able to use parts from the other thing that broke to fix the current thing that's broke. Now this is the one that caught my eye. This is a 1972 International Transtar, and it has, I'm not sure if it's a 6V71 or 6V91, but it's a two-stroke V8 Detroit diesel, and that right there is a blower. So this is a blower motor, and that is why it has this massive air box on the side of it to feed that big old blower and pump all the air and fuel down into that big V8 diesel. Very cool little truck. I like it. And it's red. Gives me some ideas. With the old farm all tractor. There are some treasures in this shop for sure. This huge, huge milling machine. Uh, I'm not very up on uh, machining equipment but I know this is really old really cool and probably still works perfectly got the dial indicator there so this here is a huge lathe you can see the bed goes all the way down there and then this old drill press is an old belt drive drill press OSHA would lose their mind over this thing. Now this here is super cool. This looks like a workbench right here. But if you go all the way down here, past all the other tools, and get back to here, it's, this is a monster belt drive lathe. And that is the, the bed of the lathe. All the way across the shop over there. So it's probably the longest one I've ever seen in person. It is huge. Here's the rear supports. I go belt to drive it. Check this out. It's tied together with leather boot laces. Big electric motor right here to run it. There's just engine parts and pieces and this is a blacksmith forge. See, there's the chimney hat, 
We have a fire here, and this is a hand crank blower. It still works. Feeds down there to stoke the flame and heat everything up so you can. Alright, that is super cool. The air goes in and up to the bottom. Can you imagine being out here working how hot this would be right here? And you get hand crank and then hammer and pound steel. Old people were awesome. There's this giant 8x8 eight eight tractor in here with the engine pulled out of it. And he's got a beam sitting on the roof and chained to that beam here. And I'm very much assuming that's what was used to lift the engine and get it out of the tractor. Like I said, old people are awesome. Okay, so we're going to get this one moved out of our way so that we can get back here to load up the others. And of course, we're using our Matt's off-road recovery rope. It's almost like he's done this once or twice. Yeah, I'd say he knows what he's doing. Have you done that before? And, and, and don't worry, I'll cut out the 15 tries you did before that to get lined up first. Hey, come on now, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I only had one redo. I mean, I would help, but you know, for like cinematic purposes and such, it's better if I don't. Oh, it's okay. You already helped earlier when I was, you know, doing what I was supposed to be doing, which is not doing anything apparently. Yeah, this dude shows up with all his work clothes on and everything. We got to pack a 150 pound door and a whole bunch of parts and all that all the way over to the trucks. I was supervising and, and telling stories and, and something. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Come here. Come here. Give me your hand. See how clean these gloves are? They just bought them. <laughs> so, yeah, there's three of us over there. There's two loads worth of stuff. The guy shows up with all his gloves on and all that. Said, all right, we got to carry this, 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 and this. On, we get all the way back to the truck and I realize I'm carrying the door. The other guy's carrying the parts and he's just walking and talking. Can you go see if that's in gear? Does it have? Yeah, everything's still in it. Okay. There we go. I'm trying to drive her. Good enough? Good enough for who it's for. I agree with that. It doesn't steer very well with four flat tires, just in well, case you were wondering. Did you expect it to? No. That's cheating. That's genius. Didn't you have a grandpa in your life that looked at you and always told you, Casey, work smarter, not harder? My grandpa is 81 years old and still, still drives, drives trucks truck. every day so no he did not say that here comes truck number one to be rescued he's got the scout he's gonna get pulled out of the way and then i'll bring my truck in
So that's what I get for talking shit about uh, your backup job. Yeah, how many times was that? <laughs> Four, five, and look, now they're dirty. Oh, I'm okay? so proud of you. I'm actually working now, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I joined the crew. Yeah, he really did only have to pull up once and I just did it like 15 times, so karma. So we are not taking the topper. It is staying here, but the topper saved the bed, which is great, and the tailgate. You know, everybody always says everything and the kitchen sink. Yeah. Some other cool stuff here too. But we're just taking the four trucks and the scout. So, did you film underneath this? I did not. I showed him the coilovers. Yeah, so that Dana 44 front axle is sitting on that pile of dirt. The oil pan is not in the dirt. So this truck weighs about 5,500, 5,800 pounds. And uh, yeah, Blackberries. I think we're gonna have to like just do the old pull and drag to get it out of the dirt first. Nah, we'll see. It's only gonna go. Uh, famous last words, did you hear that guys? It'll, it'll just go, Casey says. It'll just go. Got a Dodge Cummins with four wheel drive and a big trailer. I hate black bears. Yeah, they're worse than puppies. <laughs> yeah. So Ben is filming this. He has no faith in my winch pulling this up here. I mean, I'm all about it may be working, but. Yeah, that's probably. Oh, did you see, make sure it's not in gear or anything? No, I didn't I mean, do any of that. Like, it's got four flat tires, but. It was 100% in gear. Sweet. So that would have made it really fun. Yeah. Oh. goodness it's gonna go I have been proven wrong see the, the reason you don't have faith in winches so much because you run those worn winches I use the Harbor Freight oh, so, so we don't worry about yeah it. that's definitely the that's definitely the problem uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. your hook just pocket. well your hook just went in between those two ramps Casey says that that is science right there. I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure what he's talking about, but he's got more degrees than I do, so. 1973 International with coilovers. Never, never say never. Because the right side tire is, just keep turning because it's coming. It's just so flat, it's trying to fold over. Now, now turn back straight, go more straight. You're pinching yourself now. To the right, to the right, to the right. Okay, you're about ready to come up over the edge. Tires have like at least a half a PSI in them. Okay, you're on the back deck right now. Okay. Your winch is really, your winch is really angry. Huh? Your winch is really angry. Yeah, we'll put a block in it. What are all those parts and pieces there? They look fancy. This is the recovery ring that you use with synthetic rope. As the okay. rope goes through, it turns because it has almost no friction at all and slides on the mats off-road recovery soft shackle and we use a mats off-road recovery soft shackle instead of any of my other soft shackles because then i can say mats off-road recovery and my video gets more views <laughs> thanks matt yeah matt comes through again matt saving the day not even being here darn it he's gonna want rev there off that yeah not going to be a whole lot of driving it's only going to do what it's going to do getting it off will be fun good thing we have a forklift let me put it in neutral see 
See, because I have a Harbor Freight winch, I didn't even realize that it was still in gear. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to be an all-day joke. Yeah, yep. still steering. Really amazing how fast that Harbor Freight winch is. Yeah, it's all it's all money out of your pocket. So hard to say, if uh, you'd like to hook me up with some winches, I'd That's be down. That's a bad segue. <laughs> yeah, I'd be down. The, the, the lesson here today, though, is bring the smaller trailer. Yeah, because then you'll have to haul the bigger truck. Right. Bottom down on that block that we put under there? No, the exhaust. Okay. The block's ro rolling with the truck. Okay. You so screw us. You're gonna rip the exhaust out. Can we not rip the exhaust out somehow? Um. What we put? So there's some really neat uh, farm-ready hose clamps, and those hose clamps, the bolts are facing down, and the downward bolts are catching the little triangle ribs on the ramps. Speaking of, I want to cut those off because I don't like them. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, one. I put that block there so it can stick up on the back of the truck. Try it. Or it's going to rip the exhaust out, which it's doing right now. That's, that's okay. Yeah, let's see. So as we're joking about this Harbor Freight winch, something we just realized when we went to go take this off. <laughs> yeah. The tires don't even turn, it's just dragging this truck up, no problem. What do you guys say about that, Mr. Warren? Well, I mean, hang on. I like how you use that distraction to get out of talking about Warren Winches when my Harbor Freight is dragging this locked up truck up the bed, no problem. Hey, Harbor Freight wasn't around when I was younger. You're a youngster. They weren't around. I had to get the stuff that was local to me. I lived in Oregon. That's how we made. Just happened there? I don't want to talk about it. What? Why not? I didn't the choke this down first, and the then camera is on now, though. And then it came apart when I pulled on it. But you know, what I do want to talk about because you haven't watched the video of putting the winch on this trailer yet because yeah. you're a hater and don't like my stuff. Right. Um, when you watch it, you'll see that I took a worn winch off this trailer to put that Harbor Freight one on there. Oh. And they don't even sponsor me. We should call. Find out who's a bigger hater, you or them. I, I don't know. It kind of want me to steer? That's good. You don't want to steer? Huh? That's good right there. It's on the wood. Hey, look, we can take that muffler off too. <laughs> All the parts we left behind. We don't need any of those. Not look at how many us. things tried to hang us up and this winch just kept on pulling. Ben's got his loaded up, I've got mine loaded up, and now comes the important part. We gotta go find somewhere to eat. All right, we are headed home. I 
think we got everything done we need to do over here except leave so we're gonna do that hey look at that guy it's crazy how backwards the weather is on this trip uh, we live over in the desert dry side of Oregon where it never rains and then we come over here to the rainy wet side of Oregon uh, and it is clear blue sky okay we're heading back up over Sandium Pass now and as you can see Got a nice dusting of snow and everything, so hopefully there's some snow at the top where we're going to go. And it looks like there's going to be. That right there, right there, is a Hoodoo Ski Resort getting its first blasting of snow for the year. So that should be opened up here pretty soon. Got some on the sides of the road. I'm getting excited. It's uh, almost time to take the track jeep and the wheelies out to play. And we are back at the 406 garage. So now we just got to figure out where we're going to park these things, at least this one, uh, so I can get off my trailer and then uh, see where we go from there. Oop, I got a light out. Got to change that. All the other ones work though. Think about adding a couple more up there just to make it easier to see at night. Not easier for other people to see it, easier for me to see where it is in the mirrors. Wow, super dark. Come here! There you are! Oh man, people were going to be so mad if we made a video and you weren't in it. Hi. Hi. Oh, so happy, so happy. Mad. Oh, so mad, so mad. <laughs> Dad left me home. Dad didn't take me. Hi. So I thought we were going to figure out how to drag this thing off, but then Ben went and fired up a forklift, so I guess we're not going to have to deal with that. So I grabbed Lucy, and we're going to see how this goes. Those are long forks. Huh, those are so long. <laughs> Full on Austin Powers. You want me to pull out so you can set it straight down? There. You're good. Hold on. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, it's tilting. Huh? It's tilting. <laughs> the wrong way, though. It seems like a metric mile long, too. Well, and it has that big old diesel stuffed in it. Which? Tell which, me I'm going to your trailer. You got a mile of room. Huh? You got a mile of room. You're good. Which, by the way, remember uh, to comment down below what kind of diesel engine that is so that uh, we know, because we don't know. I think he's pushing that little fork up to the max there. Well, I guess that's how you do that. Hi. Hi. Ah! another flat so you say this one is going to be a driver again 
This one will get saved, yep. This is going to get... This one is going to be turned into somebody's dream. I think their dream starts with a pressure washer. Yeah, I'll, actually I will do that fairly soon. And then I'll, I'll show what it looks like afterwards. Oh, that tailgate really does not stay up. Yeah, that, that, that's why the ratchet strap was on it. Oh yeah, you even found a little well on spot right there. It's like it's not the first time that tailgate was ratchet strapped up. I feel like that's kind of the truth. So remember this truck, I showed it in uh, the video when Ben got the cab over. And now he's chasing a dog. So this is the last time it's going to look like this with a, There's a fender in the back. With a crunched fender and a bent bumper. The rest okay. look like that. Ooh, look at that. It's like old and shiny at the same time. Yeah, preserved. That's Not cool. restored, but preserved. Not restored, so this is its actual... That's the original paint, that's that paint. Wow. And then that won't rust out anymore, Ernie? It's got wax on it, so... It'll it'll stay like that. In theory, it's not clear-coated, because if you clear-coat it, it will never age anymore. Gotcha. So a lot of people like to patina polish their truck or their car, and then they clear-coat it so that it won't ever change. But if you do that, then the 50 years of evolution of the patina stays the same and never changes. Some people like that. I don't. I like it to continue to do, you know, its thing. So this whole truck is going to look like this. Yep. It's going to get this grill put in. It's going to have that fender put on. The doors at the shop, body shop are ready. And then they're going to take off these little hooks and stuff because they're goofy. And he's going to wet sand and polish the whole thing and it will all look like that fender. So the whole truck will look like that. This thing is, it's in really good shape though. Yeah, like you can literally, it's in neutral, you can bump the key and it will start. But I, I was not kidding. <laughs> Just old reliable. It's a shame that fender got crunched because this thing is in such like yeah. good shape other than that. Well, and that's why since I had a fender, it was worth doing the correction for everything because it is the right color and everything. The little things that I notice, even though, I mean, it's got little dents in the wheel wells. It's got dents in the tailgate because it's been used. No, this, this has never been used. Look, if you get down, look at the bed floor. Like, it's not, it doesn't have huge humps and stuff in it, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the bed rails are straight. Right. And then your favorite thing about doors opening and shutting. Well, now that I know how heavy the stupid things are, how could they not shut that smooth? <laughs> yeah, you, were, uh, you look like a struggling guy at a buffet trying to get his third plate when you're carrying that thing today. Goodness. Watch this. I'm going to get a real super cinematic shot. I probably looked really dumb doing that in real life, but once I do this right here, it's going to look super cool. What year is this? So 68. 68. And this is three quarter well, ton? 67. It was titled as 68. Yeah, this is three quarter ton. So 67 had the headlight ring that was around here like this. Those headlight rings you took off today, they fill this whole thing. Remember oh, those? yeah, they're, they're squared. Yeah, and they touch the grill. So that's 68. And then 68 had a marker light right here which this does not have, so that means it's 67. Even though it's titled as 68. So international, yeah, so that's the funny thing about internationals back in the day, the dealerships. When the dealerships sold the truck, whenever that was, that's when they titled it. So it could have been built in 1965. This didn't happen this bad, but like an example, if it was built in 1965 and it sat on the lot for three years and they sold it in 68, they would title it as a 68. But then if you're trying to get parts or pieces like that, you got to know. You need to know what it is. Yeah. So this is a 67. It was probably sold the very end of 67 or 68, which I have the original title. We could go look at it. And that's why it was titled as a 68. So here's a question. 
What year is this International Harvester fridge? It's uh, 55. And what year is this one? 51. And what year is that one? It's a Philco. That's a 48. <laughs> I'm not going to stump you, am I? <laughs> so it's coming back. <laughs> so my battery's almost dead, and Ben's gloves actually got dirty today. So that is now <laughs> going to be it for this video. Everything's been accomplished. We got both trucks back here. We got to go back and get two more. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Because you got four of them. Four total, plus some parts, but we brought all the parts. parts. So we got to go back and get two more trucks next week. Lucy needs to go to bed. And that's going to be it for this video. So we will see you guys next time.